morning and welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. I thought today I'd bring you our uh, service from the beautiful outdoors, the wonderful surroundings of our countryside. Pete and I have just got back from a beautiful crisp morning walk where we've walked down by the canal, down by the water and as we think this morning of Jesus' baptism, I just thought it would be lovely just to reflect and be outside and share our morning worship with you. So we're not able to meet together in person at the moment, but I do hope that these few moments will bring you closer to God, will restore your soul and bring you peace. So let's pray. I'm going to pray our opening prayer, which today is the collect for Epiphany 1, as I say, as we think about the baptism of Jesus. Heavenly Father, at the Jordan you reveal Jesus as your Son. May we recognise him as our Lord and know ourselves to be your beloved children through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. So we're going to come to a time now of saying sorry to God and we'll just take a few moments just to be still before God and bring those things that we need forgiveness for today. So we pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And God promises forgiveness. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We have a wonderful hymn this morning that you can uh, listen to and sing along to uh, on the link on your service sheet. It's a beautiful Celtic version of Be Thou My Vision. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought by day or by night Waking or sleeping, thy presence my life Be thou my wisdom and thou my truth I 
Thou mine inheritance, Thou and always. Thou and Thou only, the first in my heart. High King of heaven, my treasure Thou art. to our Bible reading now and Pete is going to bring us today's Bible reading which is from Mark's Gospel. The reading is from Mark chapter 1 verses 1 to 12. This is the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. It began just as the prophet Isaiah had written, Look, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you and he will prepare your way. He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. This messenger was John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness and preached that people should be baptised to show that they had repented of their sins and turned to God to be forgiven. All of Judea, including all the people of Jerusalem, went out to see and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptised them in the river Jordan. His clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food he ate locusts and wild honey. John announced, Someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I am not even worthy to stoop down like a slave and untie the straps of his sandals. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. One day Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, and John baptised him in the Jordan River. As Jesus came up out of the water, he saw the heavens splitting apart and the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, You are my dearly loved Son, and you bring me great joy. The Spirit then compelled Jesus to go into the wilderness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Heavenly Father, will you give us ears to hear what you have to say to us this morning? And will you give us the courage and the confidence to respond? In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, I've put all three Bible readings from our lectionary readings today on our service sheet because they are all well worth reading. We read in Genesis 1, in the beginning, a fresh new start that's what God offers us each day as followers of Jesus. And I felt that fresh start today as I came out 
on this crisp morning. New opportunities are what we are offered. And as followers of Jesus, the offer of baptism cleanses us, makes us part of the church community and the opportunity for the Holy Spirit to come upon us as we read in our Acts reading, chapter 19, verse 6. That offer to be filled and sent out in the power of that Spirit. Now Mark's Gospel talks about God doing a new thing in and through Jesus and his followers. That's you and me. Now we'll be focusing on the reading from Mark's Gospel in my thought for today. Mark's Gospel is the very first book of the New Testament that I read when I became a follower of Jesus at just 15 years of age. I was bubbling over with joy and new life, the new life that I'd received from God and I, I just couldn't keep quiet about it. It just kept spilling out of me and that's what's happening here in Mark's Gospel. He's in a hurry to tell us the story and it's full of action full of events and they come thick and fast and one of Mark's favourite words is immediately as he shows Jesus moving decisively from event to event. So the story begins. You're sound asleep and you're dreaming when suddenly the door bursts open and a bright light shines in your face and a voice shouts at you telling you to get up, wake up or else you'll be late. A splashing cold water on your face just to make the point, to get you to stop dreaming and to tell you that this is the most important day of your life. He's telling us that that is what John the Baptist was like to the Jewish people on this day. John's ministry burst onto the scene. Mark doesn't offer us a genealogy of Jesus. He never claims to be writing history or poetry, but he moves at breathneck speed, um, taking us straight to the banks of the Jordan River. Now, although Mark's gospel is the shortest of the four gospels, I agree with Simon Jenkins, who's a writer and editor, that this is the most gripping. This gospel is probably written before Matthew, Luke and John's, which makes it the first account and has a lot of stories that sound like eyewitness accounts and a lot of vivid detail. Now Mark doesn't bother telling us about the birth of Jesus but he jumps straight into his baptism and then the call of his disciples. But I, what I also like about Mark's account is his interest in showing us both the human and the divine side of Jesus. Mark tells the story of Jesus' life, death and resurrection, not as a new story, but rather as a pivotal moment in the larger story of God making himself known in human history. The God we meet in Jesus, Mark tells us, is the same God spoken of in Hebrew scriptures, who is now doing a new thing. Now Mark makes it clear from the beginning that this is the beginning of the good news of Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. He begins his gospel with Jesus' baptism to show that Jesus was prepared to become like us and was baptised alongside lots of others in that river. So why is Jesus' baptism so important for Mark and what does it have to say to us today? Well, in baptism, we don't stop being who we are, do we? Or get to ignore our history that inevitably and fundamentally shapes us. Just as Jesus has not stopped being Mary's boy in Beth from Bethlehem or the incarnate God, so we are all someone from somewhere. When we come to the waters of baptism, we bring all of that with us, all our humanity, all the ways our families and experiences have made us who we are, the good and perhaps the not so good. The Reverend Dr. Marshall Jolly states that we come to the waters of baptism, not just as individuals, but as those rooted in our communities and contexts as well. In order to know ourselves, we have to know each other. In the same way that Mark's gospel is the beginning rather than the sum total of all that he said about Jesus, so too baptism is not a sacramental trophy to be displayed in a locked cabinet. 
Baptism is the beginning of a covenantal relationship with the living God made known to us in Jesus. The baptised life is not a career that we pursue and that we only pursue it on Sundays or one day we may retire from it. It's a vocation that is meant to be lived out intentionally every day. It's really important that we renew our baptismal vows over and over again. It's important that we tell our stories over and over again because we so easily forget them, don't we? An essential part of our vocation and being a follower of Jesus is reminding each other who and whose we are. That is why our church community is so important. We share God's grace, mercy and love, open ourselves up to vulnerability and tell the story of God we meet in Jesus, a story that continues in and through each one of us. Now Mark tells the story of Jesus' baptism in such a way, doesn't he, that he wants us to feel that water, to feel the breeze and to be part of that amazing sight. Mark goes on to describe the heavens opening and God's voice disrupting this gathering, this status quo, declaring that Jesus is his beloved son. In this opening passage of Mark, the Gospel of Mark, it brings us a sense of shock, a new thing that God is doing. The alarm clock suddenly waking us, it really is morning, just like it was for Pete and I when we went out on our early morning walk today. So I wonder, where are we asleep today in our church communities, our local communities, our personal lives? What might wake us up, I wonder? Do we want life to remain the same, to stay exactly where we are? If we desire a life dedicated to following the living God as we work together to build God's kingdom, then maybe we need to start at the water's edge. Amen. Pete's going to lead us now in our time of prayer. Let us pray. Let us pray for all people in all places and in every kind of need. We thank and praise you Heavenly Father for your many gifts to us, gifts earthly, spiritual and eternal. We pray for your church across the world and here in Ashby, Braunston and Welton. As Jesus was baptised with water and by the Holy Spirit, may we be cleansed, filled with your Spirit and sent out to tell our stories. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all people who live in constant danger especially those people who live in part of the world where the danger comes from their own rulers and their own people. We pray, pray for people suffering from all kinds of oppression, whether through prejudice, deprivation, disease or exploitation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for people who live in fear of what the current economic recession may bring, for those facing redundancy, the loss of their homes and financial distress. We pray for all who are without faith, hope or love. We pray for those who are sick, desperate, bereaved, and those who care for them and seek to bring them relief from their suffering. Give them the strength and courage to carry on and hope for the future. We pray especially for all those known to us who are in special need of our prayers. We remember them now in a moment of silence. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord God, keep us under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, 
and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to lead us in the commission that we uh, pray and say together following a baptism. You lovely people, God has touched you with his love and given you a place among his people. God promises to be with you in joy and in sorrow, to be your guide in life. In baptism, God invites you on a lifelong journey together with all God's people. You must explore the way of Jesus and grow in friendship with God, in love for his people and in serving others. Together, we will listen to the word of God and receive the gifts of God. And we pray together, fill us with the light of your presence and establish in us the joy of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So may God, the Holy Spirit, who came upon the beloved Son at his baptism in the River Jordan, pour out his gifts on you who have come to the waters of new birth and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you, remain with you and those that you love now and always. Amen. So we've come to Christ, the living water. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. So may God bless you. Have a good week.